starts robbing the Meccan caravans. Of course they will distort. Of course they will change and twist. Um, but Muhammad was persecuted in Mecca, we acknowledge that, and he eventually fled Mecca, went to Medina. Now, once he's in Medina, how much do the Meccans care about him? <clears throat> they don't even think about him. They don't even mention him. They don't even uh, lose sleep over him anymore. The Troublemaker is gone. We That's can, it. We can, we, can go, we can get some sleep now, so right? Our life is back to normal. And Muhammad, now that he was in a different city, he had the opportunity to live in peace without conflict and just couldn't do it. What does yeah. he do? He starts robbing the Meccan caravans. It's robbing the Meccan caravans. It's robbing the Meccan caravans. And there are once again many examples here. For example, it is a common claim that the Prophet Sallallahu in the early Medinan phase resorted to highway robbery. That he would stand on the road or not, or basically uh, hide himself with the Sahaba on the road and every time a caravan went, he would just attack and rob them and take their goods and belongings. Now, initial response, A'udhu Billah, this is totally false. But you go and you look up and you find out, no, it's not totally false. It's just distorted. The Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba never attacked caravans unconditionally. They attacked the Quraysh. There's a big difference. There's a big difference to say that he used to attack caravans all over Arabia and he used to attack the Quraysh. The Quraysh, yes, definitely. The Sahaba would definitely find out where they're heading and attack their caravans. Why? Because of 13 years of oppression, because of being expelled from their own countries and lands, because of confiscating their property. The Quraysh expelled the Muslims, took over all their money. The Sahaba had no money when they left for Medina, the Muhajirun. These people wronged us. We have the right to do this back to them only. The Sahaba never attacked caravans of other tribes, only the Quraysh. So it's a factual statement that has been distorted. No, again, you cannot take ayats of Quran. You can't take parts of the seerah and treat it separately. You got to treat it all together. You see, this was a strategy of war. The Quraysh were criminals. The Quraysh were murderers. The Quraysh was already committing heinous crimes against the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he inspired the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a dream and with revelation that the Quraysh was moving some of their most precious commodities from one place to the other. So if my enemy, while I was with them, drove me out, while I was with them, killed some of my followers, plotted on my life, and now I'm in a place where I got my own spot and I catch my enemies in between with their commodities. Now, is that called robbing or is that a strategy of war? No, he stopped the caravan in between. He didn't kill no women, he didn't kill no children, and he didn't take from nobody except those who was robbing and stealing and killing and transgressing before. And he didn't do that consistently. He did it on the basis of the strategy of war that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him at that time and place. And anyone who was in a battlefield would have done the same thing, right or wrong? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes.